Hey everyone, my name is Thomas, and welcome to this month's episode of What's in the Sky. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere and wondering what celestial treasures are waiting for you above, you're at the right place. We've put together a created list of the most spectacular deep sky objects you can see this month. From the biggest globular cluster in the sky to three incredible galaxies millions of light years away. No matter what gear you're using, a pair of binoculars, a backyard telescope or a smart telescope, there's something here for you to enjoy. So grab a hot drink, get comfortable and let's get ready to explore the night sky together. And before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us so you never miss a monthly guide. Let's talk about what the planets are doing this month. While June isn't packed with planetary drama, there's still plenty to see if you know when and where to look. Most of the action happens early in the morning skies, but we'll start with one planet you can catch right after sunset. Mars is still hanging in there, just barely. It's continuing its slow descent towards the horizon and becoming a hard to spot, but it's still visible if you're quick. Right after sunset, look low in the northwest sky. You'll need a fairly clear horizon, think ocean views, a hilltop, or just somewhere without buildings in the way. At this point, Mars is more of a visual tick the box than a detailed observing target. For a telescope, it's small and not showing a lot of surface detail, but it's still fun to catch, especially if you're new to the hobby and want to say you've seen the red planet with your own eyes. Now, if you're more of a morning person or a dedicated night owl, Saturn is the star of the show right now. You'll find it rising in the east around 4 a.m. and by dawn, it's high in the sky, making it ideal for telescopic observing. The big news with Saturn this month is that it's no longer edge on, which means the rings are starting to open up again. That slight angle makes a big difference. Even a modest telescope will show you the classic ring silhouette. If you're lucky enough to have clear skies, it's well worth setting an alarm for. Venus is also putting in a brief morning appearance. It's still there just before sunrise, but it's best observed early in the month. In fact, on June 2nd, Venus reaches something called dichotomy, which means it's half illuminated just like the moon when it's in its first or third quarter. This is the best time to view it in its phase with a telescope, even binoculars might show a hint of its phase. Look east just before sunrise and you won't miss it. It's the brightest object in the sky after the moon. If you've never viewed Venus for a telescope before, it might surprise you. Instead of just a bright dot, you'll see a glowing semicircular shape, softly illuminated in the dawn light. While its thick clouds hide surface details, the clean outline of the planetary phase is really striking. And finally, Neptune. This one's more of a challenge, but a warning one if you're up for it. It's starting to rise just before dawn, still fairly close to Saturn in the sky. Like Saturn, your best viewing window is from about 4am until sunrise when it's high enough above the horizon to cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere. Now Neptune is not visible to the naked eye, and even in a telescope it appears as a tiny bluish dot. But there's something kind of magical about seeing a planet that's almost 4.5 billion kilometers away, the most distant of the regular planets. If you can track it down, give yourself a big pat on the back. It's a real observer's badge of honor. Now let's turn our attention to something a little closer the moon. This month we've got a great opportunity to catch a stunning lunar feature that's easy to observe and super rewarding to explore, the Lunar Alps. Mark your calendar for June the 3rd and set aside some time between 6 and 8 p.m. That's the sweet spot. The sun will be casting low angle light across the moon's surface, creating long shadows that make the Alps really pop through a telescope or binoculars. Now, what are the Lunar Alps? They're a prominent mountain range stretched across the moon's northern hemisphere, right next to a dark, smooth area known as Mare Imbrium. This entire region was shaped by a massive impact billions of years ago, and the Alps are actually the rim of that ancient impact basin. If you zoom in with a telescope, you'll see some stunning detail. Sharp ridges, deep valleys, and if the lighting is right, a feature called the Alpine Valley running through the range. It's a feature that always impresses no matter how many times you've seen it. And the best part? You don't need a massive setup. Even a small telescope or a good pair of binoculars will give you a rewarding view. This is one of those nights where beginners and seasoned observers alike can find something amazing. 
This month, we've got three incredible galaxies to observe, each with its own unique features. But that's not all. We're also highlighting one of the top five objects in the southern sky. With these stunning galaxies and the standout object in the mix, there's no shortage of amazing deep sky targets to explore. Let's dive into the details of what you can expect to see this month. Our first deep sky object this month is an absolute showstopper, Omega Centauri. If you've never seen a globular cluster before, this is the one to start with. It's the brightest and largest globular cluster in the entire sky. So bright, in fact, that under the right conditions, it's visible to a naked eye as a fuzzy patch, even from the suburbs. What you're actually seeing is a dense swarm of stars, possibly as many as 10 million, all crammed into a compact sphere about 15,800 light years away. And when you put a telescope on it, you'll suddenly resolve hundreds, even thousands of tiny points of light, light grains of glitter scattered across the sky. It's one of those rare objects that's impressive no matter what gear you have. Omega Centauri starts to become visible around 6 p.m., with the best time to observe it being between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. It's located in the constellation Centaurus. Our next target is something truly unusual, Centaurus A, a galaxy unlike almost any other in the night sky. At first glance, it looks like glowing oval with a dark stripe through the middle, and that's exactly why it's often nicknamed the Hamburg Galaxy. What you're seeing is a massive elliptical galaxy sliced through by a thick band of dark dust. The remnants of a smaller spiral galaxy is likely devoured in the distant past. This striking appearance makes Centaurus A one of the most visual, distant galaxies you can observe from the southern hemisphere. And on top of that, it's home to a supermassive black hole, blasting out radio waves and X-rays. It's one of the strongest active galaxies we can see from Earth. Centaurus A is best observed between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. when it's high in the southern sky. It's located in the constellation Centaurus, just a short hop away from Omega Centauri. So if you already found the cluster, you're almost there. Look a little higher and westward and you'll spot this galactic oddball not far away. Our next galaxy is Messier 104, better known as the Sombrero Galaxy. It gets its name from its striking shape, a bright central bulge with a dark band slicing across it making it look like a wide-brimmed hat floating in space. This galaxy sits about 29 million light years away in the constellation Virgo, and it's one of the most recognisable edge-on galaxies in the sky. The combination of a bright core and dark dust lane makes it a favourite target for images, and a rewarding challenge for visual observers as well. You'll want to observe the Sombrero galaxy between 7 and 9pm, when it's highest in the sky. It's located in the constellation Virgo, near the bright star Spiker. Let's move on to another galaxy that's a real showpiece, Messier 83, the southern pinwheel galaxy. This is one of the brightest face on spiral galaxies in the entire sky, and it's located right here in the southern hemisphere, in the constellation Hydra. What makes M83 so compelling is that a classic spiral structure, sweeping arms, bright star forming regions, and a prominent central core. It's the kind of galaxy you picture when you think of a galaxy and that makes it an exciting target for astrophotographers and a rewarding challenge for observers. It's about 15 million light years away and with enough exposure time or a large enough telescope, you can start to pick out the structure that gives it its name. Plan to observe M83 between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. when it's highest overhead for us southern observers. It's located in the constellation Hydra, southeast of Centaurus A. Look just below the constellation Corvus and you'll be in the right area. It's well placed during these hours for both visual and imaging work, with minimal atmospheric interference. Now for something within our own galaxy, and a true gem of the southern sky. This is NGC 4755, better known as the Jewelbots Cluster, and it absolutely lives up to its name. Located in the constellation Crux, right near the Southern Cross, the jewel box is a compact, open cluster filled with young hot stars. And what makes it really stand out is the vivid colour contrast. You'll see brilliant blue stars with mixed with one or two reddish orange giants, creating a colourful, almost glittering appearance, just like a box of jewels spilled across space. It's around 6,400 light years away and was famously described by astronomer John Herschel as a casket of variously coloured precious stones. That poetic name stuck. And it remains one of the most beloved sights in the southern sky. 
you will want to view the jewel box between 7 and 9 pm when it's high in the sky. To find it, all you have to do is just find Mimosa, the eastmost and second brightest star on the cross, and the cluster is tucked just beside it. This is one of the easiest deep sky objects to locate and appreciate, especially for those new to the hobby. Next up is Acrux, the brightest star in the Southern Cross constellation. Acrux is actually a binary star system, meaning what you're seeing as one bright point of light is actually two stars orbiting each other. It's the southernmost first magnitude star in the sky, and it plays a crucial role in navigation and cultural traditions across the southern hemisphere. Located about 320 light years away, Acrux is a beautiful blue-white star and is a central part of the most iconic constellations. You'll want to observe Acrux between 7 and 9 pm when it's high in the southern sky. Located in the constellation Crux, Acrux is easy to spot as the brightest star in the Southern Cross right at its base. Before we finish, a quick shout out to a few more objects worth checking out. The Colsac Nebula is an impressive dark nebula visible to the naked eye in dark skies. Great for binoculars, but tricky with light pollution. Markarian's chain is a great collection, but you'll need a large scope and dark skies for the best views. Lastly, the Tweezers Galaxy, NGC 4945, is a beautiful edge-on galaxy, perfect for smart scopes and astrophotography. For more on these, head to the blog for all the details. That wraps up this month's journey through the night sky. From planets to galaxies and stunning lunar features, there's plenty to explore no matter your experience or equipment. We'd love to see what you're observing. Send us your photos and share your stories in the comments or on social media. It's always awesome to see the night sky through your eyes. If you enjoyed this guide, don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more stargazing tips and monthly highlights. Thanks for joining us, happy observing and clear skies ahead.